I will not stand, I will not sit and watch this kind of shit. We are not animals. There is no slave trade anymore. Vero from Kenya. I worked as a domestic worker in Saudi Arabia where I never knew that I was going to Saudi Arabia to work as a domestic worker. I knew I was going to Qatar to work as a receptionist. Then when I reached uh, Qatar, I, I was told like, no, you still have another flight to Saudi Arabia. So I was very much confused on what to do. I, can, I can't connect back to my people because my SIM card when I arrived in Qatar, it didn't work. So I ended up going to Saudi Arabia. When I reached Saudi Arabia, I was still confused because I never knew what I was going to do in Saudi Arabia. So I had to wait for the people to come and pick me, to take me to know where I can work. So he came, a man and his wife, they came and took me from airport where they speak to me Arabic, which I never understood, but they were like, okay, this is what I'm going to tell you. We're going to teach you water in Arabic. Uh, you have to say, if it's water, say it's water in Arabic. A spoon, you need to understand spoon in Arabic. So they tell me, so they tell me when someone asks you for this, you'll know what to do. We reached home and uh, they changed me. They say, we are not your bosses. We are going to take you to another house where you'll find your bosses who are there who you'll be your bestest man. I ask, why am I here? Because I was told, like, this is not my job. The promise of good jobs to the Middle East has turned into burning hell to many Kenyans who have pulled the decision to be exports of non-governmental agencies. Kenya has become one of the leading modern slavery to the Middle East. Hundreds of thousands of young people are being exported to Gulf countries in expectations to get quick financial solutions to their lives. Non-recognized individuals have become millionaires of the business, creating non-governmental agencies that are massively exporting youngsters to Gulf countries. 90% of these recruits are young girls who are seeking greener pastures and with the mentality of changing their financial status of their lives and families. Astonishing enough, only a hate of the workers to Middle East come back, not because of the jobs they are offered, but due to the mistreatment and underpayment they go through that does not support their way back home. Various human exporting business traffickers mostly based in Nairobi have different places where they can find these young boys and girls. It's time matures for them to be exported abroad. This business is conducted without any government involvement. These innocent citizens are blackmailed with encouraging and well-paying jobs only to arrive and land into house help jobs with us employers. My name is Frank Wetindi, Kenyan from Mombasa. Uh, I had to migrate from my country to Dubai at least to look for employment. The job I went for, just like I said earlier, was I was to be a driver. But uh, to my surprise, I was forced to do some different job which wasn't the job I went for. I became a loader. My work was to load flights, uh, baggage, more especially the uh, the small flights. So we were forced to work like from morning to evening, extra hours. So the job to me was, wasn't quite good because it was tiresome and even the climatic conditions were not even favorable during the day. It was too hot. And we used to work extra because we could work on like nine flights in a day. So by the time you get home, you're really tired. Uh, resting hours were very few. You could rest for at least four hours. Then you're forced to go back again to work. The salaries, they were not as uh, I expected because when I left the country, I was told I would be paid at least 90,000 Kenya shillings. But on arrival, I was, I was forced to sign another contract again. The contract was, uh, the salary was 23,000 Kenya shillings. Now, according to the salary, I could not persevere for long because I had so many responsibilities back at home. 
my parents were also expecting me to support them and my small child that was by then three months. The job terms are two year contract that should not be defaulted in any way. On arrival, their passports are taken in order to fulfill the two year contract. This is to recover the commission amount paid to the agencies by the bosses, which forces the employers to do whatever it takes to ensure that no losses. However, the agencies ensure that the agreed period is completed. Most of these poor workers send three quarters of their salaries back home to their families, making them live poor lives abroad. They lack medical support and daily upkeep despite of working under strict rules. Any mistake is thoroughly punishable resulting to thorough beating or even salary deductions. Gulf countries are not English and Swahili speakers, which brings a bigger language barrier between the workers and employers. Many of these working premises are closed where employees are not allowed to interact with any outsider nor familiarize themselves with the surrounding environment. However, most of them are forced to change their religion to Islamic. In history, there has been noted mistreatment of domestic workers mainly in Qatar, United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia, where many Kenyans are destined to. In the last three years, Kenya has recorded more than 93 deaths of domestic workers in the Middle East. These are the few cases that the Kenyan embassy in those countries has managed to track down. The projection shows that more than the realized numbers of Kenyan citizens die in Gulf countries without any information relied to the public. Cases of brutality, poisoning and violence have been reported on social media with young ladies suffering helplessly without anyone to help them, either from the employers nor their fellow workmates. The few who lose their lives are not revealed where their bodies are buried. In spite of immense violation of human rights, governments are still silent to the matter with no measures to control this booming business. However, poor Kenyans are driven by greed and mentality to easy wealth to avail themselves as exports to these agencies. The Kenyan government has urged citizens before to use the embassy for migration purposes to create an easy tracking of their location abroad. Stubborn citizens have not heed to this policy in the desire to use shortcuts and getting themselves into the real hell. The violation of human rights and labor rights in the Middle East is something of major concern not only to African countries but to a civilized world in the current century. My name is David Kennedy and this is the big fish.